In today's video, we have a ton of work to get done if we want to have this thing ready for Easter Jeep Safari. Now at the end of this video, we basically are going to be done with this truck. When this is being released, I should be, as long as everything goes as planned, I will be already in Utah at Easter Jeep Safari. And once we get this rear to 100%, we're gonna move on to the front, get all the suspension done, coil mounts, shock mounts, all that stuff. We have ARB compressor to install, switch panel to install. There's just an astronomical amount of work that still needs to get done, so let's get to it. Okay, so I got the brake lines all done. Not perfect, uh, but we got our attachment right here. Took me a little bit to get it so it doesn't rub on this. And because I was only able to get a 12 inch long one, I really needed like a 10 inch. I had to bend it, bend it, and put it underneath here so it wasn't too long. So got that to work and then bent this one utilizing the same uh, tie down that we had right here originally up and over the axle truss. And then I drilled and tapped right here. And then we welded our other tab right there. So we have room for our shocks to go right there. Um, overall, it's not perfect, um, but I will never think about it again unless it starts leaking, except for right now. So I'm happy with it. It looks good. Got our vent tube right there. Now that I know that all that is going to work, I will going to take all the brakes and take everything off so I can start painting it and getting it ready uh, for final assembly. Now before we can start trimming these fenders, I enlisted my buddy Ryan to come over and help me install the bed on this truck. And unlike me, he is actually a legitimate welder. So make sure you guys follow him on Instagram and uh, check out his content. He's building some really cool stuff. How I decided to trim these fenders is I just used the top of the fender flare line, marked it all the way around, went ahead and did that same line again with my painter's tape. I just used a super cheap battery powered jigsaw I had laying around using a Harbor Freight uh, sawzaw blades that I cut down and modified to be more of jigsaw size so I can actually make those contour cuts around the body. Worked out really well. I ended up trimming way more fender than I actually needed for these tires to clearance properly. So the first step in what we're doing is we got to mount our coil, and like I said before, I know the down travel limitation is going to be this coil coming loose in this coil bucket. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the coil up inside the coil bucket and then get it to where it's loose. And I'm basically going to give it just like one pump with the jack just to make it snug. And then that is going to be our maximum down travel. Now, if you guys don't remember from, I think, probably this first or second video, these are stock Jeep Gladiator coils, JT coils, and for the bottom, which some of you did comment before, the bottom of the coil is the smaller side. I'm going to be using a TJ stock isolator, so there's no lift on this, just uh, a stock isolator, and that fits perfectly in the bottom of this, uh, which works really nice. And then for the top, these are the factory Mitsubishi Montero upper spring isolators. So we're gonna throw this in there and we'll start, we'll go from there. I just want to take a quick second to remind you guys to take advantage of 10% off Barnes four wheel drive stuff. Everything on my Jeep, suspension, bumpers, everything was Barnes four wheel drive. They have been a supporter of the channel since basically the beginning. Awesome company, awesome guys. They make great products, builders products, bolt on products, all the suspension on the S10 
is Barnes Four Wheel Drive, all the links, all the brackets, the joints, everything Barnes Four Wheel Drive. I absolutely love them. And this is another example of what's going to be going on the truck. This is the Axis bed rack. Uh, they have a bunch of new accessories that are going to be coming out for this as well. We're going to be installing this Axis bed rack in a rooftop tent, truly making this a overland uh, rock crawler combo vehicle. So make sure you check out the link in the description. Click the link, automatically give you 10% off Barnes Four Wheel Drive or use the code MUDDYBEARDS at checkout. Now back to the video. So we got the shock totally figured out. We got our full bump right now. Everything clears at full droop. Everything is good to go. Nothing uh, is uh, clearance issue, no clearance issues or anything like that. Uh, next up is the bump stop. So these are the Icon Vehicle Dynamics Universal Bump Stops. Comes with this uh, aluminum puck and this guy pops into there. So in order to figure this out, we are at full bump right now. So we need, at this point, we need our bump stop fully engaged and it'd be lifting the body up and not uh, pushing into this shock. So I know that I'm going to need to use pucks to drop this down because I designed the bump stop around uh, the tire clearance to the fender and not full bump of the shock. So that's my bad. So I did the bump stops first. I did the bumps, the shocks first on this side. So now I know that uh, if I put this here, I know how long of a uh, a, a stanchion or a plate that I need to have to run into this. So on the passenger side, I did like three and a quarter inches and th that was not high enough and it would bottom the shock out first and the bump stops were totally useless because it just bottomed out the shock. Now these one inch aluminum spacers came off the body lift of my TJ and I've saved them. I held on to them for the last couple years uh, because I replaced the body mounts with uh, the Barnes four wheel drive uh, boat side body mounts which move them up and you can weld them on and not use these spacers. So they're going to come in handy because I need two of these. So basically we're going to stack two of these. I drilled this hole out to I believe 9 16th so this bolt that I found this came off of the IFS of the truck. I'm just using parts I have laying around guys. That's kind of like the whole theme of this is all the parts I'm using, most of the stuff I'm taking from the Jeep, taking from parts piles in the garage, these are shocks uh, that were in Nate's uh, box that Nate had. Um, I was like, hey man, you got some shocks that he could use for mock-up? And he's like, hey, I have these ones. So I'm building this around having the shock. This is an 11 inch travel shock, not super long. Uh, so I'm working within the limitations of this shock. So this is a really nice shock. So I want to utilize it and not have to spend a ton of money to buy an equivalent nice shock. You'll see when we do the front, I'm going to reuse the same shocks I had in the front and those are 10 inch travel and they worked really good in the TJ so I'm just going to reuse them on this. So that's why we're, I'm working around the parts that I have in order to keep the budget down. So let's bolt all this up and then we will decide how tall of a platform we need to make. So we can see right here, we have pretty much the whole weight of the vehicle on this. Gonna weld this in, and then because it's not perfectly offset, because we're running a three link with a track bar, the axle moves side to side as it goes up and goes down. So at ride height, everything's centered. When you droop down, it goes to the passenger side. And when it comes up, it comes to the driver side, which means this little platform that's hitting it is now on the passenger side because the axle is moved towards the driver's side. So anyways, we're gonna make a little uh, triangle to reinforce the gusset off of this tube. And then also, unfortunately, with this lower part being uh, smaller, because the last coil is small, and like I was using this TJ one right here, in order to put this on here like this, um, I'm basically gonna have to permanently mount this in here and weld it with this in there. Otherwise, I'd have to cut this and then slide it around it and then put it on. So I know for a fact I'm running these. I, I, I'm at the point, I'm running out of time. I need to just do, to just do it. So I'm gonna put them in there. And then this little uh, platform right here, I forgot to mention the reason it's round and specifically this size is because 
it has to fit through this hole because otherwise I won't be able to take the coil off. Those are the two reasons I'm doing it this way. Now all we have to do is install this on this side. Boom, look at that guys. We are totally done with this side. Everything is torqued down, marked. Everything is good to, to, good to go. Um, these are the Fox Remote Reservoir uh, Universal Mounts. I took these off of the Jeep uh, yesterday. They had the coilover remote reservoir mounted, my old Kings. They were just sitting on the body of the Jeep. So I took those, utilized those right here. So we have our upper shock mount. I forgot to show you guys this little tab right here. Uh, I cut this out and then welded this to the frame right here to tie this all in, make it a little bit stronger. Another thing I finished up was a more permanent uh, retainer for this upper coil mount. And then I also notched a little bit out of this coil tower on the top here because when I was putting the other side together, I noticed that at a certain angle that this shock was just barely touching this right there. So I decided to just grind this out. This coil top pad is plenty big for this. So overall, I'm super happy with the rear and the way it turned out. A couple of things I got to finish up. I'm going to finish assembling the brakes. I got a brand new brake kit with all the O-rings and new parts for that uh, because those are all worn out. And I've been using uh, on all of my bolts and on everything right here, uh, I'm using the Revlock race supply, uh, basically paint that everything is marked so that we can tell if anything comes loose on here, we'll be able to tell if anything moves. So I'm going to try this out. I'll let you guys know if I like it or not. Uh, so far, pretty cool. Um, you could also use a paint pen. I also have a paint pen. Uh, but the thing with that is if you mark it, it's kind of permanent. You have to, you know, like use something to rub it off. This moves, it's kind of like a chunk of paint. I can actually pull it off and make a new mark and I'm not confused about which was my new or old mark. So I think that's pretty cool. We're doing final assembly on this rear axle, which means uh, installing all of the brakes, replacing all those O-rings that I talked about. And then we're gonna be installing fluid into the differential. Almost forgot that, didn't forget. Torquing the wheels on and doing all that stuff to make sure the rear is 100%. So the front bump stops, uh, I'm going to use, uh, this is the Metal Cloak TJ front bump stop. Uh, I really like this. I had this on my TJ. Uh, they worked really well. So these are just the little pucks. I stole them from my Jeep. Normally, they're installed inside the coil down like this. So all we're going to do is we're going to flip them sticking up, and then we're going to weld these pucks to this truss. And uh, it's going to bottom out on the frame. This is a fully boxed frame already. I don't even, I'm not going to do anything to the bottom. It's just going to hit the frame and uh, super easy, super simple. I already measured it and it, without adding any spaces or anything, the at full bump, these right here are going to be perfect. So all we got to do is just weld these on and pop these in and then we can move on to finishing up uh, our coil tower. So this is just tacked in. I know that my front is too short. Uh, if you guys watched a couple videos ago where I completely did the front suspension, uh, I used four and a half metal cloak springs. I now have six inch metal cloak springs. So once we weld these bad boys on, we're going to go throw the six inch springs on, see where we're at as, for as far as ride height, and then see how much we want to cut out of this coil tower. And then once we get this dialed in, I have a bunch of plates I already made for the frame to box this frame in around the coil tower. Um, Ton of stuff to get done guys so let's get to it so we have all these cardboard cutouts of the frame reinforcement and for this track bar mount that we are going to install onto this frame so all we got to do is take this cardboard and check it out now 100 percent done all of our plating is done our track bar reinforcement our upper coil tower i ended up cutting two and a half almost three inches out of it total our upper shock tab Everything is all 100% done. 
on both sides. So we have all of our reinforcement on the frame all the way through. We have all of our frame reinforcement going on right there. So next thing up is why I have the shock is we're gonna put this thing at full bump, droop out the other side down to uh, full droop, and then we're gonna put the tire on and start figuring out where we're gonna be cutting everything. So that's the next step. Okay guys, the whole truck is on all fours. The front suspension is done, figured out. A couple things I gotta tighten up. Brakes are done, hydraulic. So power steering, hydro assist is done, steering box swapped out. Uh, my ARB compressor's done. Basically, I've been knocking this thing out hours and staying up late every day after work and I'm trying to get it done because it is like one o'clock on Thursday. We are leaving for Easter Jeep Safari tomorrow morning and uh, I still haven't started this up. I haven't driven it. There's no transmission fluid in it. I just picked up my drive lines. This is the rear drive line, obviously right here, big fat beefy guy. And that is the front short little stubby guy. So we got to install those. And then on the passenger side, um, I'm setting the toe. So basically uh, because of the steering on this, the arms are not straight and the hydro assist is attached to this lower bar, which sets the toe. Uh, I need to take this heim joint out and adjust it that way. And also right here, what I'm doing is I'm changing out these uh, these Yukon slugs that 100% lock up the front axle all the time, which they're super strong and they work really good. But for this being a driver, I'm gonna put my, uh, my spare worn hubs. I had a set of brand new spares that I had for the Jeep. Uh, so I'm putting those on that way I can unlock and lock my hubs and you can see right here now that we're under here You can see the suspension uh, Metal cloak six inch spring and I ended up running a TerraFlex inch and a quarter TJ spacer and then obviously we had to trim our fender a lot and We got a hole here in the front that goes right up to where the battery is and everything so once I get this all figured out, I might have to patch this hole because I don't want stuff going from the, the fender well, from the tire into the fender well. Um, but for now, that's what I'm working on. Once I get this down, we're going to try first startup, uh, get everything bled, and hopefully we have no leaks. Well guys, I am super bummed. I did not get this thing finished in order to make it to Easter Jeep Safari this year. I worked super hard um, and I just couldn't make it happen. At the last minute, when this was starting up, I was putting power steering fluid in it. Uh, I noticed that it was pouring, not pouring, it was leaking, dripping aggressively out of the sector shaft seal. And uh, that's something I'm gonna have to address, pull the steering gearbox out, reseal it put it back in and then we'll go from there. But I just literally did not have enough time to do it. You know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm gonna take the savings of fuel, lodging, food, the savings of this whole trip because these trips are very expensive and put it back into the truck. Ordered a rooftop tent yesterday um, with that savings uh, that I didn't spend on this trip. Anyways guys, enough of me moping around. We're gonna keep working on this thing. We're gonna keep motivated. And the amount of work that I got done trying to get this thing done, like having a deadline and a goal, the amount of work that I got done to get it to this point was like probably would have taken me three or four months. I got done in like three days. Now I'm burnt out. I'm going to take a couple days off and then we'll get back at it. If you guys want to follow me on social media, I am at muddybeards 4 x 4 We got a website, shirts, stickers, stuff like that, muddybeards4x4.com. Uh, we got discount codes. Make sure you check out Barnes Four Wheel Drive. Huge supporter of the channel. Um, get that 10% off. And until next time, guys, we will see you back here in the garage. <laughs>